All right, second video for you guys, and it's going to be number nine. It's a little bit of a discussion with even function and odd function. I'm going to take a moment at the end of the video to explain like why thinking about even and odd functions are so important, especially when you guys start to get into calculus. And I might even get a second to talk about my most proud moment ever as a math student. So uh, with the even and odd function problem, I, what, I'm not going to go through this step by step to kind of have you do this in an exploratory sort of way. I, you guys can do that on your own. I think you guys can graph these without too much effort. But what I'm really going to do is kind of elucidate from a more technical perspective what this all means. So even and odd functions are definitions. We don't prove what it means to be an even function. We don't prove what it means to be an odd function. They're definitions. And the definition just boils down to this. A function is even if for some function f, if you put the, if you input into f the opposite value, a, like the opposite, so if a is a positive number, you input a negative number. And if you put a negative number, you get a, you know, if it's a negative number, then negative opposite a would be a positive number. You get out what f would have been if it was just a. That's what it means to be an even function, like just as a definition. So what does this mean? This means if we take our function f as it was defined here, and we plug in f of a. So we say, okay, what would f of a look like? f of a would just look like a to the fourth power minus 3a squared minus 4. That's what f of a is. Now the question is, if we input f of negative a, or f of, I should say, f of opposite a, do we get out f of a? Well, I don't think that we need to actually spend a whole lot of time going through the algebra of this, you guys will see that because these exponents, 4 and 2, are even exponents, and it's no coincidence that that's where the word even function comes from, because they are even exponents, you guys then know that a negative opposite a to the fourth power is just a to the fourth power, and opposite a squared is just a squared. And so what we've in fact done is confirmed that since f of opposite a is equal to f of a, that this function is in fact even. Now what the problem leads you to do is do a little bit of an exploration and come up with a property that's really actually quite awesome. All even functions have y axis symmetry and that's awesome that that's really kind of a cool fact and vice versa i should even go far to say it's an even function if and only if it has y axis symmetry if something has y axis symmetry then sure enough it, it has to be an even function as well and we can see that from this graph right here we can see this is the function f plotted and we see sure enough this has f axis symmetry. This has y axis symmetry. So, I, I, and I want to make the point, like make it in terms of straightforward numbers, what this actually means. Let's say, for example, um, that we're looking at this point two. Uh, that's a that's a really good one to look at. So we have this point two, and let's just say two was our a. If we plug in f of opposite a, would we get excuse me, if we plugged an opposite A into F, would we get the same output? That is, is F of opposite A the same thing as F of A? And sure enough, we can see that that's true. F of A is 2. F of, two, excuse me, F of 2 is 0. And we can see that F of opposite A, F of negative 2 is also 0. So therefore, we can see that it has a symmetry for any point A, any point on the x-axis A, and we can see that this symmetry, in, in fact, exists, in fact, in fact, occurs. So that's an even function. All even functions have y-axis symmetry. Now let's, let's turn our attention to odd functions. Okay. Just like even functions have a definition, odd functions have a definition. And that's if, if you input opposite A. Same thing as before. If you input opposite A. If you input opposite A into G and G is an odd function, then what you get out is opposite G of A. And again, we can test that for what they say is an odd function. We can test out, well, let's see here, g of opposite a would be equal to opposite a to the fifth power 
minus 6 times opposite a to the third plus 6 times, and let me close this down and expand that out. Jeez, oh, can't do that. All right, well, we'll just kind of write here underneath. Plus uh, 6 of opposite a. And again, it doesn't take a whole lot of algebra then to work out then that opposite a to the fifth would be that negative, negative 1 to the fifth power would be negative 1. And what we'd have then is opposite a to the fifth minus, and then opposite a to the third power, we can do a negative 1. Opposite 1 to the third power would be still negative 1. And negative 1 times positive negative 6 would be positive 6. And then we have plus 6 times opposite a, but then you can factor out that negative 1 and make it minus 6a. And if we look at this term by term, if we thought to ourselves, okay, what would g of a have been? g of a would have been uh, a to the fifth minus 6a to the third plus 6a. What we can see about g of opposite a is these negative signs in front of each of the terms. It's the opposite sign for each term. So what that means then is by plugging in opposite a to g, what you actually get is opposite g of a, thereby confirming that this function, g, is an odd function. Now, we said earlier that even functions have y-axis symmetry, and sure enough, as you might expect, odd functions have symmetry too. It's just that they have origin symmetry. I can show that, I'll, and I'll dot that so you guys can see that a little bit more clearly. And that makes a ton of sense. G of opposite A is equal to, uh, is equal to opposite G of A. Let's think here. Let's say that, uh, let's say right here that this was our point, 0 0.61, and let's say 0 0.61 was our A, all right? So when we take opposite, 0 0.61, what we're then doing is taking opposite 0 0.61, which would be, exist over here. And if we were to evaluate opposite, six point, opposite 0 0.61, you get this value right here. But look at the function values. For g of a, we get positive 2.383. For g of opposite a, we get out negative 2.383. So what we're seeing here then is that this property of odd functions shows itself geometrically with y-axis symmetry. And we can take that away. If the function is odd, well, we can say odd if and only if origin symmetry. I'm going to actually kind of stop there in terms of the explanation and have you guys then think about this one. What kind of symmetry does, does that exponential function have? Can it be even? Can it be odd? Neither. You tell me. One thing that's definitely true is that these are mutually exclusive. Like a function can't be both even and odd. That's, that's impossible because f of opposite a is equal to f of a, but at g of opposite a would be net opposite g of a. So that just simply can't happen there. Now, I, I promised that I'd talk to you a little bit about why this is so important and why we're harping on this right now in pre-calculus. It's because there's a very powerful application for calculus. There's this branch of calculus called integral calculus, and what integral calculus essentially is, is, uh, well, geometrically speaking, it's finding the area under the curve, or to speak more precisely, it's the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis. So if you wanted to find the area under this curve, and let's say for instance that we wanted to do it from negative 6 to 6, what this would look like is you take the integral from negative 6 to 6 of this function. And let's just say it's a quartic because 1, 2, 3, 4, it's some kind of quartic function, some sort of even quartic function. All right. So if you wanted to do this, what ends up happening in calculus is, is if the function is complex enough, this actually becomes a really tedious arithmetic situation. It's really tedious, really annoying, some fractions, super, super obnoxious. But if you were to recognize at the, at the outset that x to the fourth power is an even function and it has this y-axis symmetry, then what you would realize is that this area, 
in the negative x region is the same as the area in the positive x region. And what you can do is simplify that entire operation down to, well, what we're really doing is taking the integral from 0 to 6 for our function. And we are doubling it. Since the area to the left is exactly the same, is exactly the same amount as the area to the right. And when we use zero for our arithmetic, arithmetic suddenly becomes a lot easier. So this recognition of even and odd functions will have, uh, have some, real, uh, some real usefulness in, in your pretty immediate future. Hope you guys enjoyed that video.